The femoral artery supplies most of the thigh and all of the leg and the foot with arterial blood. It's the continuation of the external iliac artery as it passes underneath the inguinal ligament. So from this point on, we refer to this vessel as the femoral artery. In some texts, this portion here will be referred to as the common femoral artery. And then this distal portion as the superficial femoral artery. But in most texts nowadays, you'll see these together referred to as the femoral artery. So as it passes under the inguinal ligament, the femoral artery immediately enters the femoral triangle, which I've highlighted in blue for you here. It's an anatomical space bordered laterally by the sartorius muscle, medially by the adductor longus muscle, and superiorly by the inguinal ligament. The floor of the femoral triangle is made up by the pectineus muscle and iliopsoas as well. Being familiar with this space is pretty important to a solid understanding of the anatomy of the femoral artery. So within the femoral triangle, the femoral artery is encased within this femoral sheath, which is a, a fascial compartment that it shares with the femoral vein. The termination of the femoral artery is at the adductor hiatus, which is this space made by the distal tendon of the adductor magnus muscle. Once it passes through this space, it becomes the popliteal artery. Now, the anterior border, or the roof of the femoral triangle, is the fascia lata, literally the broad fascia, which encases all of this space here. And the first two branches of the femoral artery, which we'll discuss, both pierce the fascia lata. The first of these is the superficial epigastric artery, which pierces the fascia lata to move anteriorly to the inguinal ligament to supply the skin, superficial fascia, and superficial inguinal lymph nodes in this area. So that's the superficial epigastric artery. Next, we have the superficial circumflex iliac artery, which departs just opposite the superficial epigastric and then tracks toward the ASIS, the, the anterior superior iliac spine. It supplies the same structures as the superficial epigastric, so skin, superficial fascia, and, and inguinal lymph nodes, in a, a slightly different distribution. Now, there's a small hole in the fascia lata located around here, uh, which is known as the saphenous opening. There's some fascia covering this opening, which is known as the cribriform fascia. Our next branch is notable for being one of the vessels that pierces the cribriform fascia. That's the superficial external pudendal artery here. It supplies some of the skin of the lower abdomen as well as the external genitalia. Arriving at a similar destination but departing more distally from the femoral artery is the deep external pudendal artery which initially traverses across the pectineus muscle to supply the skin of the perineum as well as the labia majora, or in men, the scrotum. Our next branch is the largest of the femoral arteries. It's the profunda femoris, or deep femoral artery. It arises in the upper third of the femoral triangle and mostly runs parallel to the femoral artery. It gives off a number of its own branches, the first of which are the medial and lateral femoral circumflex arteries. If we make the femur transparent, uh, we'll be able to appreciate their passage a bit more clearly now. So these first two branches of the profunda femoris depart early in its course and then form this anastomosis around the neck of the femur. They're crucial to the blood supply of the femoral head, neck, and trochanters. The medial circumflex coursing around the posterior aspect. And the lateral circumflex around the anterior aspect. Notably, occlusion of the medial femoral circumflex 
can cause avascular necrosis of the head of the femur. We can see they form this anastomosis with the superficial circumflex iliac artery. If we continue inferiorly now, this descending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery eventually contributes to the blood supply of the knee joint, which we'll get to in the next video on the popliteal artery. The profunda femoris also gives off these three perforating branches, which perforate the adductor magnus and each contribute to the supply of the muscles in this area. So here we can see the perforated branches perforating the adductor magnus. The first of these perforating branches is located above or superior to the adductor brevis. The remaining two are inferior to the adductor brevis. So that's a, a useful anatomical landmark. And the last branch of the femoral artery is the descending genicular, which arises just proximal to the adductor hiatus. It descends in the medial aspect of the vastus medialis muscle, which it supplies, and then anastomoses with the medial superior geniculate artery, another branch of the popliteal. The descending geniculate also contributes to the supply of the adductor magnus. And that's it for the branches of the femoral artery. Now let's finish off by briefly touching on the other contents of the femoral triangle. There is the femoral vein, which accompanies the femoral artery in the femoral sheath. Then we have the femoral nerve more laterally. There are a number of prominent inguinal lymph nodes found in the femoral canal, which is immediately medial to the femoral vein. And that's it for now. Hit subscribe if you like this video and we'll see you next time.